This is the third Sunday of Lent here in Yucca Valley, California. The epistle is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5. Brethren, be followers of God as most dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, and hath delivered himself for us an oblation and a sacrifice to God for an odor of sweetness. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not so much as be named among you as becometh saints, nor obscenity, nor foolish talking, nor scurrility, which is to no purpose, but rather giving of thanks. For know you this and understand that no fornicator, nor impure, nor covetous person, which is a serving of idols, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the anger of God upon the children of unbelief. Be ye not therefore partakers with them, for you were heretofore darkness, but now light in the Lord. Walk ye as children of the light, for the fruit of the light is in all goodness and justice and truth. The Holy Gospel. <clears throat> taken from St. Luke chapter 11. At that time Jesus was casting out a devil, and the same was mute. And when he had cast out the devil, the mute man spoke. And the multitude were in admiration at it, but some of them said he casted out devils by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. And others, tempting, asked of him a sign from heaven. But he, seeing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself shall be brought to desolation, and house upon house shall fall. And if Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because you say that through Beelzebub I cast out devils. Now if I cast out devil, devils by Beelzebub, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I, by the finger of God, cast out devils, doubtless the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man armed keepeth his court, those things which he possess, possesseth are in peace. But if a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he will take away all his armor wherein he trusted, and will distribute his spoils. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through places without water, seeking rest, and not finding, he saith, I will return into my house whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then he goeth, and taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And entering in, they dwell there. And the last state of that man becometh worse than the first. And it came to pass, as he spoke these things, that a certain woman from the crowd, lifting up her voice, said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore thee, and the breast that nursed thee. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they who hear the word of God, and keep it. Thus are the words of the, saint, of the Holy Gospel. By a little way of introduction, uh, this is my first time here in Yucca Valley. I understand this beautiful chapel you have. I understand it has never had the Novus Ordo Mise, the new Mass of Pope Paul VI. Thank God. And may... Take it off. It's okay. Sorry. And may this chapel never see the day of that cursed new Mass coming into these walls. So, I'm Father Hugo. I have uh, been a priest 
uh, next month it'll be 27 years I was ordained by uh, Bishop Williamson and I've, uh, I was in the seminary and trained in the uh, seminary of Archbishop Marcel of Feb of the Society of St. Pius X. I was ordained in 1992 and, and I've been assigned to numerous places and always it was clear, the clear stand of Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, which was always persevere with the true Mass, persevere with the, the true faith of Catholic tradition, and take care of the sheep that call us from all over the world. And this is what Archbishop Lefebvre did in this, uh, since says the Second Vatican Council, which was, as he called it, the greatest destruction of the church in the history of the church the second vatican council which lasted from 1962 to 1965 now you young people might say well that's so long ago what does that have to do with anything now well look at our holy father pope francis promoting error and smashing what's left of our catholic church causing scandal and all the bishops soaked in modernism and the clergy causing much scandal mainly because they don't even teach the faith. Bishops no longer teach the faith, and aside from all the immoral scandals. So this is all an effect of Vatican II. And drive down to your local parish church. What are you going to find? A real Catholic Mass? You're going to find reverence to the Blessed Sacrament? No, you're not. You're going to find a silliness around the altar, man-centered ceremony, and something that insults and blasphemes God more than honors and adores Him. So Vatican II is still deeply affecting the world, and it's taken many souls to hell, many souls to hell by the truckloads. So what Archbishop Lefebvre did, the, him and Bishop de Castro Mayer, in 1988, they, they told Holy, the Holy Father, Pope John Paul II, they said, you, your prayer with the Jews in the synagogue that sang, while they sang, they were still waiting for the Messiah to come. And then uh, the horrible scandal of Assisi, the gathering of all the world religions in 1986. That was the first one. And he allowed the Buddhists to put a Buddha, a, a statue of the devil, because the gods of the Gentiles are devils. Buddha is just a big fat devil. <clears throat> And they burnt incense to this devil on the tabernacle of a Catholic church. And, uh, and then Pope John Paul II stood there with equal to all the false religions, representatives of all false religions. Children, what's the first commandment? I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt not have strange gods before me. You know the first commandment. And this broke so severely the first commandment by our Holy Father, by the Pope. So Archbishop Lefebvre, he, he said this has gone way too far. He said, Rome has lost the faith. Rome has lost the faith. Just as Our Lady, the Virgin Mary, said in La Salette to the shepherd children, uh, Melanie and her little brother, Rome has lost the faith. And her further prophecy says that Rome will become the seat of the Antichrist. It's certainly been the teaching of the Antichrist, for sure. Because religious liberty, ecumenism, collegiality, the new mass, all promotes the dethroning of Christ the King, the mocking of Christ the King, putting our Lord Jesus Christ on an equal with all the false devils, this is a terrible sacrilege and a mockery against the true God. So Archbishop Lefebvre, when he consecrated the four bishops in 1988, he, it would have been a mortal sin for him had he not done this. And he said that, he said himself, I don't want to appear when I die and hear from the Supreme Judge, you have destroyed the church with the rest of them. So the good Archbishop Lefebvre, he, he saw clearly, and he was a great prelate of the church. Under him, when he went to Africa, there was only a few dioceses. When he left, there was almost 
uh, over a hundred dioceses, schools, orphanages, convents, seminaries, and uh, catechism taught throughout all the tribes of the French-speaking Africa and into the wilderness, reaching tribes that had never seen a priest before, never were baptized before. So the work Archbishop Lefebvre, Lefebvre did in Africa as a missionary was tremendous. And when he came to the Second Vatican Council, he saw our Catholic Church hijacked. Hijacked by a small horde of modernists who had a very serious agenda to overtake the church and drive the church into the rocks to destroy her. That's why Hans Kung, Father Hans Kung, he said at the time when Cardinal Ratzinger was there with his suit and tie as a priest, Hans Kung said, Martin Luther left the church. We're staying in this time. We're going to destroy her from within. Just exactly as St. Pius X foretold would happen when he condemned the modernist synthesis of all heresies in 1907 in the great encyclical Pascendi. And Pascendi wasn't the only one. There was the addition of Lamentabile, all the errors of the modernists condemned. Then he put out the great Code of Canon Law, which was the, the 1917 Code of Canon Law. Then he, he put out the vigilance of all the bishops to look after their dioceses and, and look after, censor, censor the, the publications and the books and look after the teaching going on in all the schools and the universities. Watch over so, so that these wolves don't get inside and eat the, devour the sheep from within. But this is exactly what happened at Vatican II. And we're living that. We're watching the, the self-destruction of our Catholic Church because of Vatican II. But the Catholic Church continues. Even if it's reduced to a handful, says St. Athanasius, it still remains the true Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's where we want to stand. That's where we want to stay. With the true Catholic teaching. The true Catholic tradition, as was handed down by all the apostles, well, start, let's start even farther, from the Blessed Trinity to our Divine Lord, our Lord to the apostles, and He commanded, go convert the nations. Don't dialogue. That's not the policy of God, dialogue. Convert the nations. Convert them. Preach the truth. Overcome the darkness by the light. Spread the fire of charity throughout the world. And that's what the apostles did. And that's what the Catholic Church has always done for 2,000 years. This is a mission of the church. And then with Vatican II, it was exploded from within. And now we're just scattered souls all over the world, Catholics trying to survive and save their soul when our leaders have lost their heads, starting with the Pope, the bishops, and so we're in a very serious time of apostasy, as you all know. But God bless you folks. I haven't even hardly met you yet. But your building says a lot. that You have been faithful to the Catholic Church of tradition. That you love and stay faithful to the true Catholic Mass. There's never been a table in this sanctuary. And may you die before ever witnessing something like that. And it looks like you had a school, a big school. And the concern and the passing down the faith to the children. This is so important. And out of the children will come, God willing, future priests and future nuns and future, future Catholic doctors, lawyers, professors, and so forth. We need to re-Catholicize this this dark age, this dark world. And it always begins where, where the church has always begun, with the real Catholic teaching, the, the good catechism of the Catholic Church, not the new catechism. And the real, all the graces that flow from the sacrifice of the Mass. Jesus crucified, that's what the Mass is. And you children know this when you prepare for First Communion. What is the Mass? 
the sacrifice of Jesus in an unbloody manner on the altar. That's the Mass. The only difference between the Mass that's going to take place very soon and Jesus when He was crucified on Good Friday, there's only one difference. It's the same exact sacrifice in every single way. But there's only one little difference. And that is, there's not blood splashed all over the sanctuary. The priest's hands are not dripping with blood with Jesus crucified. That's what mystically happens though. That's the Mass. That's why we kneel down. That's why we adore our Lord Jesus Christ crucified and His sacrifice made present on the altar. And around, always around the Divine King are always millions and millions of angels. So Yucca Valley is filled, filling right now. Right now they're descending from heaven. Millions of angels to adore Christ here on the altar and His sacrifice that will take place. And then always where Jesus Christ is, is the heart of Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mary. She's never separate from her Son. If you see the miraculous medal that was uh, commanded to be struck uh, under instructions of the Virgin Mary, you've got on one side the cross, and always at the foot of the cross is the M. Mary always is at the foot of the cross. That's her place. So when the sacrifice of the Mass takes place, Our Lady is definitely here among us, kneeling before Him with us. And at this Mass, we want to ask, like this blind man, open my eyes and open my mouth and help me to walk, help me to see. And we see by... We're all blinded in some way because of sin. Sin blinds. Sin obscures. And then, and then all the modernist teaching. And then all the propaganda of the modern world, which is, which is becoming more and more anti-Catholic. And all the brainwash. Let's just call it what it is. The brainwash through so much internet garbage and radio and TV. And it's, it's, it's an advanced form of brainwash. And most people are brainwashed because they just drink in all this garbage from the media. And who runs the media? The enemies of Jesus Christ. Pope Pius XI and Pope Pius XII spoke about that. The enemies of Christ run the media. And so most of our news agencies, CNN and all them, they're, they're, they're run by the enemies of Jesus Christ. And they fill our heads with all this, these lies. Even political lies, economic lies, and especially the theological lies. So we want to ask our Lord, open my eyes. And what opens our eyes is the light of the true Catholic faith. A little child of five years old who can answer the simple question, Johnny, why were you made? I was, and he knows it by heart, hopefully you kids do. I was made to know, love, and serve God and to be happy with Him forever in the next, forever in heaven. Now that little child is five, and he knows why he's existing on this earth. He knows exactly why he's here. He knows exactly what he has to do during this lifetime. Get to heaven, keep the commandments, love God with all his heart, as hard as it might be. But he has, he's, he's got everything set. But how many poor children today who don't even know anything of the Catechism, let alone who our Lord is and the Blessed Mother. These poor kids are lost. They don't, have any, they don't have any direction. They don't know why they're here on earth. And you wonder why the suicide rate keeps escalating. They don't know even what they're about. So open our eyes, Lord, by the Catholic truth. Know the Catechism. And you adults... I have a priest for 20, almost 27 years. Uh, and most of my priesthood has been actually teaching in schools, in the monastery at some time, and high schools, college, grade schools, preparing children for catechism. And I can say, every time I open the Baltimore Catechism, I always learn something new. I know all the questions. I've, done, I've read them over a thousand times. But there's always something new, something angle that sheds light. And that's the same with scriptures, that's the same with everything of the faith. There's always something new and beautiful to discover. 
in the in the same traditional definitions. So learn, learn by heart, and love the catechism. Love the simple catechism. The, and St. Pius X said the catechism and the Baltimore catechism, the traditional one, is actually pretty good. The old one. It's very similar to the one of Pius X, actually. And that catechism, he says, it's the, it's the great remedy. It's one of the great remedies against modernism. To just know the truths of the faith. That's it. There are three persons in one God. That's never going to change. The Mass is the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. It's never going to change. There are seven sacraments, not five, not thirteen. Seven that Christ instituted. These things will never change. Always the truth. Always the same. Always beautiful. Always victorious. Always giving light to the darkness of our age. So, study. Read. Listen to good sermons and talks that are now available on the internet. And open our eyes, Lord, by the truth. And it takes a grace. Remember, you might know your cat. I've met people on the airplane. Yeah, Father, I went to the Jesuit University, Fordham University. And now I'm a lawyer and I'm making tons of money, but I don't believe that stuff anymore. I knew my catechism by heart, but I don't believe that stuff anymore. So this guy, he knows the catechism probably better than most of us. He knows all the answers by heart, but he doesn't believe. And that's where grace, it's grace that moves us to believe, that prompts the will to say, my God, I believe because of your authority that reveals this. And that's a special grace. To have the faith is a special grace. Archbishop Lefebvre used to say this a lot. If any of us have the true Catholic faith, we must kneel down and thank the Blessed Mother. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm getting there. That's my alarm clock. <laughs> so, I won't go much longer, because uh, we started late as well. So, God bless your patience. But then also to speak. How are we going to speak? We've got to learn the prayers. The Our Father, the Hail Mary, the Creed. These are basic prayers. And know how to speak. Use our tongue to glorify God. As you heard St. Paul say, don't talk in pure language, in pure jokes. St. Alphonsus said, one guy at the workplace who tells one dirty joke, and five guys hear him, and he leads them into sin. He's done the work of over 300 devils, says St. Alphonsus. So speak, when we use our tongue and we speak, use it out of charity for our neighbor, good, healthy conversation, and never sin, and never lead others to sin, and especially blasphemy. You know that blasphemy against God's name, and our Divine Lord, and the Blessed Mother, you know that these sins are worse than murder and stealing. Blasphemy is a very serious sin. And if, if it's in the habit of any people, you've got to try to work to get that out of the language and replace it with good words. And then finally, to, to hear, to open our ears, to open our ears to hear the truth, to love to hear the, the truths of the faith. What would, have been, what would it have been like to be on the mount with the lake of Galilee far in the distance and on the hillside hearing our Lord teaching the Beatitudes, to hear Christ, the living God, teaching, to hear His voice, to see His expressions, to see His eyes of the divine, pure Lamb, what must it have been to see and hear the Lamb speak, Jesus Christ the King, with all the authority of God? Or to be in the synagogue when the, the, the family dragged in their son and dragged him up in the middle of the aisle and, and up in the synagogue near the, where they read the scriptures? It was, Christ was in the synagogue when this happened and, and the devil was dragged in. And the, the devil was possessing this young man, this son of the father. And Christ says to the devils, depart from him. 
And they shout and say, we know who you are. You're the Messiah. You're the one prophesied to come. And Jesus Christ orders them, be quiet. Depart from him. And all the crowds saw, saw Christ drive out these devils just at a word. What must that have been to hear Christ teach and command? And even, even further, what would it have been to see or hear our Lord on the cross. Ask the Virgin Mary what she heard at the foot of the cross. And see how many of you mothers could take it. Watching your son panting for air. For every breath our Lord had to fight for every breath. Because he had to pull down on the nails of the, in his hands. Push down on the nails in his feet. Scrape his back up against the, the splinters of the cross. And dig in the, the, the huge crown, the helmet of thorns with which they mocked him as king. Going up against the wood of the cross, opening all the wounds and blood just streaming continually down his eyes, his mouth, his chest, his hands, his feet. What mothers of you could handle this and still stay standing? If it was your own son, I don't think many of you would be standing. But Our Lady, some mystics say she fainted, most mystics say she didn't. The scripture says she stood at the foot of the cross, but she suffered so much. She suffered everything our Lord suffered. So to hear our Lord panting for air, and then to hear his last sermon from the cross, all his words, I thirst, Father forgive them, they know not what they do. Behold thy mother. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit to hear our Lord's words. So we must open our ears to hear, to love to hear the truth. And that's an advantage of our day. You can get good video, audios. You can get good um, conferences, sermons available on internet now. And hear good sermons, even Bishop Sheen's good sermons. Father Gomer de Pau, Father Gregory Hess, smashing Vatican II so well. And even the sermons of Archbishop Lefebvre in French. But recently we put out one, you can find it on SSPX Marian Core. SSPX Marian Core. There's a beautiful uh, video of the sermon of Archbishop Lefebvre in Lille. The sermon's in French, but there's English subtitles there. And you can follow that. But love to hear. Love to listen to the truth. And we all have to be thirsty for these things of God. And let's ask, and let me close with a little point from St. Bruno. This gospel ends with a woman who rises up in the crowds. And she says, blessed is the womb that bore thee. And the woman that nursed thee. And what does Christ say? He says, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. So the Protestants say, See, our Lord doesn't want the Blessed Mother honored. Because this woman's honoring his mother, and he's deflecting honor from her, and honoring those who, who keep the commandments. But St. Bruno says, No way. Christ is honoring his Blessed Mother far more. Because this woman says, your mother is great because she gave you birth and she nursed you. She must be a great woman. And Christ says, no, don't honor my mother just because she does what any mother can do. Honor her because she, above all women, hears the word of God and keeps it. She lives it. She's never sinned. She's never offended God once in her life in thought, word, or action. So she kept the word of God and she lived it. And she became the mother of the word of God. Who became incarnate in her womb. And she bore him in her virg virginal womb for nine months. And the Virgin Mary held him in her arms. She watched him grow up. She watched him die on the cross. She saw his resurrection, his ascension. And she's now with him bodily in heaven. So that's our mother. And if we want to know our Lord, go to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Go to her heart. When you pray the rosary, try to see it audiovisually through her immaculate heart, through her eyes. And she will teach us how to grow in the love of our divine Lord and fight for Him 
And she gave us a weapon from heaven. It's called the 59 bullet machine gun. It's called the rosary. 59 bullets on it. You can count them. And pray the rosary every day. So much grace, so much power, so much snatching souls from hell through that powerful weapon. And as Sister Lucia said, from, she heard from the Virgin Mary, do, do any, of us, any of you have problems? Health problems? Moral problems? Struggling with sin? Family problems? I'm sure you do. Problems with relatives? Problems with work? Jobs? Paying bills? Right? We all have problems. And not only family or personal, but also our, our cities, our nation, and the whole world, and the church. But she says there's no problem that cannot be solved by praying the rosary. That's the power of this weapon. So you good families, I'm sure you already do every night anyway, persevere in the daily rosary as a family. Persevere in the daily rosary. Love the rosary. And try to say it on your knees if you can, if your uh, knees and health permit it. Certainly the young should be able to. And offer it as a penance out of love for God. So let's go now to the foot of the cross and beg the Immaculate Heart of Mary to teach us how to love our Lord so that we see Him in the veils of the sacraments now, but in heaven those veils will be lifted and we will see Him as He is. The glory, the beauty, the majesty of the Blessed Trinity and the joy of all the saints. St. Agatha, St. Lucy, St. Bernadette, St. John Vianney, St. Benedict, and even the Old Testament saints. But they won't look old. Moses, who died around uh, 100 years old, he won't look that old. He's going to look 30 years old when you see Moses. Same with Abraham. Same with Elias. Elias is still alive, actually. And he'll, well, when he, well, that's another story. I won't go there yet. <clears throat> but anyway, let's long to see the face of God. And may Our Lady grant you this grace. O Mary, conceived without sin. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us for every course to thee. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.